I think I'm gonna want to smoke that green plant everyone knows about when I'm older. Hello, new world. Oh, no boys and girls. Legally, of course. I'm not just gonna do it with some friend's dad in a basement. I got some true stories to tell. I don't know why, out of all this beautiful scenery, I decided to video my foot. Real world outside. Take off your eyes. Obviously, I'm gonna go to South Saturday Lane and be one of those dudes throwing up on the pavement that 11 year old me would have looked at and been like, Mummy. That guy has a bad stomach. We, we, we need a help. And then mommy replies with, no, no, Tommy. He, he was just a bit busy last night. But 11-year-old me just couldn't process why someone being busy at night would affect him at 10 a.m. the next morning. Anyway, quitting social media didn't do that thing where I'm in a spiritual state of zen floating with the angels. Actually, quitting social media did make me want to float with the angels. But by doing plants, not sitting in plants. That's right, quitting social media made me want to smoke a blunt, not because I got depressed or feel free, it's because it allowed me to be incredibly bored. I've been sick the last few days and I, I, I never get sick, I don't know what to do when I'm sick. Um, so I've been doing stuff like cooking and moon watching. The moon again. And I've also re-got social media and I don't know, I've been sending people photos of my face and other stuff like that. And I'm deleting it again. Uh, so here's why. I've also realized I'm not entirely sober from social media. I posted twice on Instagram in the past two weeks. Um, but apart from that, I'm clean. That makes me sound like a recovering alcoholic, doesn't it? Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got the vibe. Social media. Ooh, scary. FOMO. Mo, mo. What was the uh, insecurities? Insecurities. Insecurities. I know people often say social media causes those, but it doesn't. I promise you, delete it for a month and you're still gonna have all through. I don't actively participate in social media and I'm still insecure as shit that I don't look like Zac Efron. When we were apes, we literally thrived on mating for happiness and survival of the fittest. It's literally human nature to want what we don't have and to want sex. So if the goal of you quitting social media is to stop wishing you were at those parties, don't bother. Every Saturday night that you're watching Grooms for the 27th time, you're gonna wish you were getting pissed. That's it, no more video games. I mean, it does help a little to not have to see 27 different Instagram photos of 27 different angles of the same photo from the same party. You know what I'm talking about when they do that thing where they say, in my Instagram photo, I'm not gonna show teeth. And then they do their little twirl of creative genius. But really, if you see those Instagram photos or not, you're still gonna wish you were there deep down because it's just human nature, human nature, human nature. Over time, we forget how serious we are about insignificant shit. So I went to my brother's rugby game to remind me. The green patches of grass are filled with what is the start of every boy's masculinity journey. Literally, the only words I could hear are, Come on! Fire up! Tackle! And I was standing there thinking, How do these buffoons take this shit so seriously? I was standing in and amongst a bunch of screaming private school dads with their faux fur jackets, and anytime they'd scream, I would quite literally start laughing at how they were so angry over this. But I've realized now that it turns out I was the buffoon. Why have we become so politically correct that you can't bash referees at a rugby game? I'm feeling philosophical here, so let me get my feel. Nothing in life inherently has meaning, and anything else you've been told is just a lie to get you out of bed in the morning. There's no how to do life one when you say, Ah, you had sex last night? 10 points on the fulfillment scale. Ah, you went to the movies by yourself? And watched a rom-com? Ah, negative 700 points right there. It's totally up to you to define what's cool and trendy and what's gonna blow up your gram. Social media acts as a metal battleground to determine what constitutes cool from school. But what's worth being serious about is influenced so much by our feed that it's only worth caring about if someone's dying or two famous people are getting divorced. Like, what have we come to if we're only allowed to be serious about things like death? That rugby game reminded me of that. Okay, I've realized that sometimes the main points in these videos can become lost, so there are three reasons, in my opinion, you should delete social media. And that was the first one, making your own rules for what you find meaning in. Even now, I feel like a f***ing school teacher saying, yeah, yeah, copy down the notes. Don't, don't actually get your book. Or do, it's up to you. I bet you these lads don't use social media. Look at these guys go. Come on. Woo! Is it cold? Good, beautiful. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. No sharks? Sharks, not here. Down the deep there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those dudes. <laughs> the problem with social media time consumption was never that one hour you spent watching Addison Rae doing random hand movements in front of a ring light. Everyone needs that hour every now and then. 
But it's never really that hour, is it? It's the same thing when that friend starts telling you that that girl really does like him. Whoa, but let me whip out TikTok. Or when the political conversation starts to get dry. From the start. Whoa, let me take a few photos of my face because everyone loves seeing how much has changed since yesterday. Have you noticed these days that songs are never above two minutes and YouTubers have to eat peanut butter to keep your attention? It's because we're all slowly getting ADHD and our attention spans are as short as they've ever been. Sorry to call you out, Sean. Um, He's my dad, he, he's not Mexican. When me and him play pool, he literally cannot go three minutes without refreshing WhatsApp. But if you ask him, he'd just say it's because I'm that trash at pool. There are two things that being sober to this addiction has made me realize. Firstly, I'm much more there. I said that because I didn't want to sound like a 52 year old preaching about mindfulness and being in the moment, but that's how I really feel. I remember the last year of my life better than any other year combined. That's also partly because that's how memory works. I feel so much more in touch. No, no, that's getting too spiritual, heebie jeebie. The second thing, I found that I'm bored so much more often now. And I love it because who doesn't love, love being aimlessly bored with nothing to do? No, genuinely, I'm actually more creative than I've ever been, and it makes sense. When the big filmmakers, artists, sports stars, anyone in the creative field needs a hit, they don't spend hours floating through Twitter quotes and TikTokers TikToking. They spend them alone, just thinking through shit. Like, I was reading Scar Tissue by Anthony Kiedis, and he said that when he knew his band needed a hit, despite being rich as hell, they would hire a random average house in the middle of nowhere and spend weeks there just thinking, coming up with new shit. But these days, if you have time to think, you're obviously just bored as fuck, so, um, get, get a life. If I were to recap all this in one sentence, I'd say this. Dear 12 year old me, I know you think you're chatting up that girl, but really she's got 28 other guys sending her love hearts at 2am as well. So delete social media because you're gonna be bored, you'll still have FOMO, insecurities and loneliness, but you're gonna be creative and you're gonna be more in the moment. And it may just actually open your eyes to stuff. No, not literally you fool, your eyes are technically still open. Ah, oh, dance like my mom. Jeez. Sorry, mom.